Hello, grade five. This week's vocabulary words are on page 264 and 265 in your reading writing workshop textbook. Number one is anticipation. The goalie waited with anticipation as the ball came toward her. Anticipation is the act of expecting something to happen. So usually you wait with anticipation. You wait as you expect for something to happen. Number two is defy. If you defy a driving rule, a police officer may give you a ticket. When you defy something or when you defy a rule or when you defy someone, this means that you resist or you refuse to um, obey them or you refuse to obey a law. Number three is entitled. The library card entitled Matt to check out a book. If you are entitled, this means that you have a right to do something. Number four is neutral. An umpire must stay neutral when making a call on a play. So a person who is neutral means that uh, they do not support or agree with either side of an argument. They remain neutral. They do not choose a side. Number five is outspoken. Henry and Jake are outspoken about protecting the environment. An, on an outspoken a person is honest and says what he or she thinks. Number six is reserved. Parking lots keep spaces reserved for handicapped parking. If something is reserved, this means that it is saved or put aside for a purpose or for a special person or for a particular person. Number seven is sought. Josie's group sought the latest team rankings in the sports section. Sought something means went looking for something. Okay, if you sought the treasure, this means that you went looking for it. And number eight is unequal. The number of players on the tug of war teams was unequal. Things that are unequal are not the same. This week's first story is Frederick Douglass, Freedom's Voice. This is in your reading writing workshop textbook on page 266. This short biography is going to uh, give more information about what people can do to bring about a positive change. Now we all know the features of biography. A biography tells the facts about uh, the life of a real person. It may include information about the talents of the subject, the achievements, their contribution to society, it may discuss important historical events in which the subject was involved, or tell people about um, what influenced him or her. The important, point, the important events in the subject's life are usually told in chronological order, which means the order in which they happened in time. And finally, biographies include photographs and captions that give more information about the subject, or they help the reader to visualize events in the subject's life. So let's start reading this week's biography. And first, let's take a look at the headings that we have. So our first heading is called Growing Up with Slavery. When Frederick Douglass was growing up in Maryland, he, could, he never could have imagined that he would become a great civil rights leader. Born Frederick Bailey, he was enslaved, or living in slavery, until the age of 20. Frederick's life was difficult. He never knew his father and was separated from his mother at a young age. If he dared to defy his master in any way, he was punished. One of the few bright spots of his youth was being taught to read by the wife of a slaveholder. Perhaps it was his love of words, along with his courage, that inspired Frederick to reach for the kind of life he was entitled to have. A Life-Changing Speech in 1838, Frederick sought his freedom by escaping to the north. In New York City, he married Anna Murray. Then he and Anna moved to New Bedford, New Bedford, Massachusetts. In New Bedford, Frederick changed his last name to Douglas to protect himself against slave catchers. This was just the first of many changes. 
he also discovered a group of people abolitionist abolitionists who shared his hope of ending slavery he had read about the abolition movement in william lloyd garrison's newspaper the liberator frederick devoured every issue because the ideas inspired him so much soon he began speaking against slavery at the church meetings he attended at the bottom of the page we have an illustration it says here this etching depicts a slave auction a common event of the time so in this section we uh, learn that first the text is going to begin with frederick's childhood as an enslaved person uh, the first paragraph provides many facts about frederick's early years and these um, details these ideas help us understand that as in many biographies events in a real person's life will be told in sequence and will supported uh, will be supported by facts so after uh, frederick escaped uh, to freedom in new york he got married and he moved to massachusetts he changed his name to avoid slave catchers he met abolitionists um, who were people that wanted to end slavery and his ideas um, sorry, the abolitionist ideas inspired him, so then he began speaking against slavery at church meetings. New Opportunities In 1841, the Massachusetts Anti-Slavery Society held a meeting in Nantucket. Frederick was eager to hear the abolitionist speakers and traveled to the meeting in anticipation. However, when he arrived, something totally unexpected happened. An abolitionist who had heard Frederick speak at a church meeting asked him to speak to this large gathering. Frederick went to the front of the meeting hall, trembling with fright. At first, he spoke quietly and hesitantly. He felt anxious standing in front of so many people, especially white people. However, once he got started, his fear evaporated. He spoke from his heart, describing the horrors of slavery. Of slavery. Frederick was a stirring speaker, articulate and outspoken. At the end of his speech, the audience's reaction was spontaneous. Suddenly, everyone stood up and cheered. Among those cheering was none other than William Lloyd Garrison. After the meeting, Garrison congratulated Frederick and offered him a job as a speaker for the society. Frederick agreed and was hired as a full-time lecturer. He felt he had found purpose for his life. Frederick traveled through New England and the Midwest, giving passionate spe speeches that captivated audiences. It was impossible to listen to his powerful words and remain neutral. Frederick had a commanding presence and spoke with eloquence and dignity. He was making a name for himself, making his mark. In addition to giving speeches, Frederick had time reserved for his writing. In 1845, he wrote an autobiography narrative of the life of Frederick Douglass, an American slave. The book became a huge success making him even more famous. In his autobiography, Frederick revealed that he was a fugitive. For his safety, his friends suggested that he go on a speaking tour in Great Britain. Frederick was very popular there, and people lined up to hear him speak. So here is um, the newspaper that we're going to read about now, published by Frederick Douglass and his wife. In 1847, Frederick returned to the United States. By now, he had a family and missed them terribly. Upon his return, they moved to Rochester, New York, where Frederick started his own abolitionist newspaper. The North Star was an unusual newspaper. It published articles not only about the anti-slavery cause, but also about the unequal status of women. Frederick also worked tirelessly to end segregation in Rochester's schools. In 